A lot of um. I don't know why I was checking. Oh, I was checking my email today. My Norwich email. Mm -hmm. Still activated, so I'm getting mad emails. Oh yeah. Oh, and I was funny. reading through them like a couple people, couple parents emailed me because um they used to do that to tell me when their kids were absent or whatever. So but then I emailed the tech dude. I was like, can you deactivate me, please? Um, but I seen that they sent coronavirus like yeah yeah tips and like, tricks and all that. Yep, and that will shut down if it gets bad. Blah blah blah. My agency does the same thing. They did the same thing. So it's like must be just protocol like. This is how we're going to handle it. Yeah, State absolutely. Of emergency. Right. And I think that um, it's like, uh, they're not, um, it's, the last I heard is we shouldn't be too worried. It was, like, it was like, just, it's just like a com almost same thing as a common cold, kind of same, mm -hmm. same symptoms as the flu. I mean. Unless you die from it and then, and then it's like Well yeah But the people The thing is The deaths have been Either really young Or really old And mm -hmm. they all have Heavy underlying Health issues Not I like it, man. Not like a normal person Dying From it I really I really just wait Till all those things Blow over Like and it's anything, with, anything with the news I just I can't feed into it I can't yeah. feed, I mean It's good Because it reminds you Like washing is better Than hand sanitizer mm -hmm. Don't neglect either Like you know, sanit sanitation is great, but at the end of the day, it's like I can't control too much. So, yeah, yeah, I think the the, the one of the biggest things was like it's just a new virus, so mm. that's what so like an evolved virus, something that came out that wasn't around before. But if you well, maybe fairly new, but either way, if you look on the back of Lysol and all that, all those Lysol cleaning wipes, yeah, disinfectant sprays, they all say flu. Influenza, same thing. Coronavirus. So I was like, huh. Yeah, it says this human coronavirus. But the COVID nineteen was a new strain never before oh, seen. Oh, the COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen. I didn't know yeah. the code name. Shoot. Sorry, right, so at least one of us is a Now I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> at least one of us is at least one of us is informed. That's what you hear my armor bearer That's saying. It, bro. We all here, son. You get the left, where's I my, get the right. <laughs> where's my mask? <laughs> Shoot. No, that was what it was. It was a, a new mutation. So that's you. why they're so worried. But I think Israel was like, they're on the brink of a vaccine. Real Israel? Yeah, Israel, they're almost there. Praise Jesus. Um, yeah, no, I'm excited, bro. So, man, we got a special topic tonight, man. Yeah. Yo, it's your bro boy Gabe, representing Young Nation Live. We out here, baby. We out here. Talent, two L's, representing Young Nation Live. Uh-huh. This is another YNL podcast. Yes, it is. <laughs> Episode five on that season wow. two. The halfway mark. Halfway mark. Have Shoot. we really been doing this for five weeks? Oh my God. I can recap. It was Miami and Colton first. Mm -hmm. You and I second. Yes, sir. You and I third? No. No? Yeah. Because last week was Colton and, and his pops. Yeah. PK. But what did we talk about? The third one. Second one. Hmm. Unless Did the first one was me and you. The first one was me and first you. First one was me and you. Then, then Colton guests, in Miami. Then me and you. Me and you. Then PK. Then me and, and you. Oh, so we got to do guests next week. Yeah, we do. It's a flip flop. We have to. I like it. So yeah, it's With in it. the works. Next week is in the works. A couple special guests coming on. Um, Man, we're going to talk about some of our passions, some of this creativity that we've been being stricken with, stricken with. Hey, Amen, my brother. Uh, lately. Do, do me a favor. Pull your mic. Just the mic up towards up a little bit. Yep. There you go. Boom, bang. Check. Perfect. All perfect. Right. Perfect. Um, lead us in prayer, brother. Lead us in Amen. prayer. Amen. Amen. Haven't prayed in years. Dang. <laughs> it's been too long. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this time together. Thank you for this fellowship. Um, Lord, we ask that you just give us new topics. Yes, Lord. Give us new insight, Lord. Um, let all this glorify your name, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Um, let us encourage the listeners, Lord God, in any way that you see fit today, Lord, tonight on this podcast, whenever they're watching it or hearing it. Um, Lord, thank you for this honor that you would give us a ministry, Lord God, like this one, Lord. So vast, so versatile, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Um, we're going to speak on some of that versatility, Lord God. Yes, some Lord. Of the creative um, insight that you've given us, Lord God, the uniqueness. Um, different things and tools that you've given us as individuals, Lord God. We're going to speak on that. And so we ask that you just allow us to 
tie it all back to glorifying your name, Mm -hmm. your plan, your mission, Lord. All about you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen, my brother. So, Young Nation Live, this is our podcast, season two, episode five, like we said. Um, You know we do music. We've talked about it before, but if you don't know, um, we do hip-hop. Yes, sir. We do hip hop. We are Christians, but we're trying. We're, we don't want to box ourselves in. We are Christians um, through and through. That is our right, foundation. Right. That's our ide- identity. I like how Colton said that the other day. Um, but I kind of got that from you. We're not just Christian hip hop. We, I mean, if you had to put us in the category, yeah. But um, we're Christians who do anything we do. Yeah, we're Christians well, yeah, first. We're, that's an that's something I've been thinking about. Um, lately is putting christian in front of anything what what are, your, what are your feelings on that do it or um i want to step out I'm probably gonna get in trouble for this but i want to step out and say no Hard let's topics. knock it off knock it off not let's knock it off i'm a, I'm a rapper you mm-hmm. want to hear you want you want to know what i rap about listen to go. the tape exactly right or uh, i'm a i'm a videographer i'm a producer i'm mm-hmm. a whatever it is an engineer anything i am this this is what i do this is my passion mm-hmm. um i think that we should stop boxing ourselves in um because if we're, if we're thorough if we're real then we're all about glorifying the name of god right and, and that's it show. that is the mission and it's going to show yeah. we're going to live it we're going to prove it show and proof and so i i used to be um no no you got to make sure they know blah 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 I'm mad at Lecrae for wanting to get out of the box. And the more I'm creating now, the more I'm seeing why he said what he said. Right. And why he was fighting, like, to get that, get that off of him. Um, I'm not like a huge Cray fan, but I see the concept of what he was saying right now. Right. And I appreciate it. Um, I think that we don't always have to be, and I don't even like saying put it, it, I don't like saying that that's being put in a box. Right. Because I don't want to f- sound like I'm unashamed to be a Christian. Because mm-hmm. that's that's one of the proudest things I have is the fact that I'm saved. Right. The fact that God has chosen to save me and awaken me to this truth. Um, but as I'm, like, growing in my faith and um, God's just chipping away at just different things, um, I'm feeling a lot I'm feeling a lot more free, feeling a lot a lot more freedom. Um and less of like uh like this little cuz for a while, for a long time I felt like a caricature. And I felt like I had to do these certain things and not laugh at these certain jokes and yeah, not talk yeah. about this certain stuff and and always have like always be rigid and ready to defend anything. Right. And the the more that I'm growing, hmm. the more mature That's I'm getting, awesome. the more like I'm like chilling. And I'm like I'm enjoying life more. You remember I told you that? Like I was I was describing my first three years as a Christian. Yeah. It was like my childlike faith yeah, year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then it was my militant year where yeah. I was like, I ain't eating. I'm fasting was all year. Was that a Jesus joke? Fa- was that a Jesus? <laughs> I was going to war for for, for Christ. Yeah. Not not even. That's not even the way to say it because we should be on the on the front lines. Yeah, but... we are. We're ready to destroy any destroy any argument, like Paul says. Right. But Defend at the same our faith. time, laugh, man. Chill. Have some fun. Right. And but I I was um I was uh legalistic. Fair, we always say that we're like we were like the Pharisees, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just trying to do too. We're doing too much. It ends up being you by your might, by your power, where it should be not by our might, not by our, by our power, but by the Spirit. Yeah, yeah, by the Spirit of God. But I toyed with I toyed with something the other day. I guess it was a thought that I was like, well, don't get too lax, bro. And I'm t- this is me talking to myself, and um. The thought behind that was you still don't want to be conformed to this world. So just 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 check yourself. Amen. And we should always be insightful anyway. But um it was like just check yourself because you don't wanna just be laxing and now you're starting to look like the rest of the world. Right. When, when right. you know you're supposed to be set apart. I wanna put them on to something real quick. Mm-hmm, put them on. Put them people right. alone, so baby. This is starting by the spirit but continuing in the flesh. This is mm-hmm. what you don't want to do. And this is, I want to get the brother, Brother Derek Thomas. No 
part in Abraham's, the law on Mount Sinai played no part in Abraham's justification. It was over 400 years into the future. Well, the law coming after cannot change then the provision uh, that God made, the promises that God made in the covenant with Abraham. Uh, you understand why he's taking us down this road, because on the one hand he's got um, Jewish Christians who are now beginning to insist on obedience to the law in some form or fashion in order to be justified, and he's got Gentile Christians who have no relationship uh, historic relationship, ancestral relationship, genetic relationship to Abraham. And, and he wants both sides to understand the significance of the promise that God uh, made to Abraham, a promise uh, that eventually leads to the giving of Jesus, uh, to, to seed, not, not seeds um, in the plural, but seed as of one, meaning Jesus, that all of this comes to pass in Jesus Christ. The law cannot undo justification by faith. Your obedience to the law cannot make justification by faith more certain. We do tend to default that way, don't we? When things are not going well, when we're in periods of non-obedience when we're backslidden a whole multitude of pastoral conditions and we sometimes say to ourselves if only I if only I did a little bit more uh, if only I prayed just a little bit more uh, if, if I if I was sweeter or kinder or nicer or something that I would be more justified and and Paul is saying when you do that you've turned the gospel on its head and there is a tendency there is a proclivity it's here in Galatia but there is a, a default mechanism within all of us to start with the gospel and to continue in the flesh to receive the spirit by faith but to continue in the flesh and Paul says, no, that, that, cannot, that cannot be. So, yeah, exactly what we're talking about. Amen. Amen. And we, we've had this discussion before. That made me think about um, those moments that we have in our walk where we're like, man, am I really saved? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, I, I never used to think like that until I started hearing it from other Christians. And then, you know, automatically I'm, I go into self-reflection mode. I'm like, man, am I saved? And... You know, you had those moments, but again, it's like, like he just, like Pastor, our brother just said. Derek Thomas. We came in through faith in the gospel, and now we tend to fall back into this flesh mode. And I think that's a an example of flesh mode when we're like, Amen. oh, am I, am I, am I saved? And, and right. we automatically started thinking about, well, for me, when I had that thought, am I saved? I just started thinking about my works and my actions and my behaviors mm -hmm. rather than my faith, which I know I love Jesus more than anything. I love the Lord more than anything. So it's like. It's just that quick realization, all right, it's not about your work. It's not about what you did, done, or doing. You believe in Jesus. You know that in your heart of hearts. And uh, God knows that for sure. Amen. Amen, I agree, bro. And it's like, Paul, like what he's talking about, what Derek Thomas is Derek talking Thomas. about, is um, when Paul's saying, you foolish Galatians, you think you're going to finish what the Spirit started? Amen. You think that's possible? There it is. They were bickering at each other. But, um, yeah, man, so important. So I was... Uh, I was big into that. And then now recently, I feel like God has just been chipping that away from me. And um, it's been peaceful. But um, it's most peaceful when, when I think like, man, I really should be reading more. I really should be praying more. What's wrong with me? Why can't I do it? Why, why, why am I not picking up my word more? Why am I not praying more? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, and then there's, and then I fall back on, on the solid foundation of the gospel. And I just tell God, I'm like, oh, Lord. If your word is true, it means that I'm either saved or I'm not saved. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that I can do to change it. And so time will tell me. And so if I'm, you know, if I'm still talking about the Lord, if I'm still out there on the battlefield a year from now, yeah, then I'm, I'm going to take that as I'm saved. And then when I get to that a year from now, and I'm still having the same feelings. I'm going to wait another year and wait yeah. and just dwell with him and let the, the work on Calvary 
do what it did. Amen. And do what it continues to do, right? God sustains it. Not only does he save us, he sustains the salvation. He initiates it. He introduces it. He sustains it. Amen. And so that's the, the beauty of the gospel. And I like what Derek Thomas was saying, the moment that you try to like, uh, say, no, you got to do this, that, and you got to be rigid. You're, you're putting the gospel and you're turning it upside down. Mm-hmm. And um, you're, you're kind of like throwing it back at God. Like, yeah, I see what you did on Calvary, but I, I'm going to read so I can get saved. Or I'm going to read so I can be justified. Or Right. that. So, yeah, I've been um, just sitting back in amazement and just watching the Spirit just do what it does. And it's like, hmm. So blessed, man. It's so blessed. I'm, I'm able to enjoy life more. It's just, it's a blessing. Amen. A blessing. Amen. And um, it's the journey too. Like we mm-hmm. are on this journey, sanctification. And it, I, I see God's hand in all of this. And when I'm straying or wavering and, and he's just steadfast. And yeah. it brings you right back to that comfort that he's in control and we are not. Right. And so much more so when, which we're about to talk about our ministries. <clears throat> um, we just, you know, we, all, we talk about this a lot that we're constantly wrestling, um, you know, basically our work, the work we do, the work we put in and mm-hmm. how much is grace versus how much is us putting that work in. And we touched on that a little bit last week when Colton was here um, with Pastor Ken and or maybe that was the other time Colton was here, but I think it was the first time where we where we were talking about creativity. That's in right. Itself. That's right. So we do want to operate in, hard. We do want to operate in excellence, but we're also living in this wretched flesh body, and um, you know we have our moments. It's a wrestle, but it's also a journey, and God is certainly in the midst of it. Um, so. Yeah, and there's something like super refreshing of having a tough day at work. And just going and like locking yourself in a room and sitting down and just taking a deep breath mm-hmm. and just realizing I'm human, I'm angry, I'm sad or whatever you're, mm-hmm. I'm depressed. Acknowledge those. I'm acknowledging that, that you're, you're fallen, mm-hmm. but you have a God that is not fallen, that is perfect, that's watching over you and who promises to finish what he started. Mm-hmm. So that's amazing. But talking about creativity, bro, why don't you talk, tell them a little bit about what you've been doing for the past 10 years and what you want to continue to do. Let's go. Right before you said 10 years, I was thinking 10 years. Yeah? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, and it's been about 10 years. So, all right. So my passion is... Because you have a lot. I don't, And I don't want you to focus on just one, but go yeah, ahead. Whatever's on your heart. How do I want to break this, that, break this up, too? Because, uh, so we have our... Our ministry, our passions, the direction we want to go, where and where we came from, kind of as a little bit of a foundation. So I want to start with let's start with by let's start by taking it back. I'll take it back, then you take it back. All right, and then we'll we'll build from there. We'll see where it goes. I'm too. Four young. hours later, we'll finish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for me taking it back, it looks like this. Um, deeply. I was pretty much obsessed with with hip hop since probably five or six years old. Um, I would now say um, I would I would say like six or seven years old. <clears throat> Deeply obsessed obsessed with hip hop to the point where I would have my Walkman uh, headphones on and go to sleep listening to lyrics, trying to memorize them. Mm. And looking back, I noticed a sin in me because I was like obsessed with how many swears they would say in a song. <laughs> I was like, swear. wow, this song has 65 swears. Oh, yes. I was swears. counting them, bro. I don't know why I was so obsessed with it. <laughs> really? That's interesting. It's weird. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And I remember because I remember in Puff Daddy, um, No Way Out, uh, Victory, with Busta Rhymes on the chorus. Man, you, do you remember that chorus, bro? No, I don't. Remind me. You got the real life. From oh, front yeah, to back, yeah, some yeah, of people yeah. in the world with it. Man, you at? but it was like it was yeah, all the yeah, replacement yeah. words. Yep, my, yep. In the world, what up? You at? Yeah, yeah. So that was wild, and I loved it. And then Rough Riders Anthem came out. DMX, come on, I ate that up. Oh yeah, ate that up. Da, da, the aggression, da, 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 da. son. Oh yeah. So I yeah. loved hip hop. Then that was elementary years. Then around seventh grade, it sounds crazy, but my brother had a boombox and it had so much bass to it. And Nelly and EI came out. 
And like I was obsessed yeah, with yeah. the low frequency. Like that's my first time hearing a sub <laughs> subwoofer. You know, EI knocks yeah, yeah. like boom. Ding, ding, you know what? Ding, I think that's one ding, song that I haven't heard ding, on my ding, on my woofer system. Yo, that junk smacks. Yeah. Country dang. grammar was before that, but even that was was um loud. It was like boom, 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 hot ish, hot ish. Mm, wow. I'm going down, down. All them songs smacked. And that was my first time hearing bass. And I, I just fell in love with rap all over again. I'm like, oh, now I got to listen to all my favorite songs yes. with a subwoofer. I do know that realize that, that feeling, revelation right? when you when you unlock like <laughs> woofers and then you're like, I got to listen to everything again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that song. Oh, no, oh, no that yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. Son. I remember listening to songs that I didn't even like, but they had a hard bass line mm-hmm. and it would bump in the car. And I was like, yep. yeah. Songs with like real weak <laughs> content, real weak lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the beat was, there was just one, smacking. There's one song, man, this bass just is just like overload. It's Kendrick Lamar, Cartoons and Cereal. Mm, hey, you to told me about that. that. Back I mean, I need to... and forth, man. I need to check that. Man, so hard, so hard. And then um and then of course like all the record all the record thong songs. Boom, mm. boom, 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 Club boom. bass. Yep, Club bass is a whole the, different yep, type of yep. bass. Mm. And then when like um I was gonna say like when when down south music came, but that's not even the thing. When down south music became pretty much the most po- almost the most popular, maybe even the most popular type of music. Really? Like around 05 and all that with like Lil John and Crunk music and stuff. Oh yeah, just based So that kind of took over. They're from Atlanta, but that started to take over just hip hop in general or as a nation. It was yeah. no longer East Coast. You know what? Another song that had a, a deep bass line was, uh, I think it's Mars versus Venus by Jay-Z. It's like boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, a dope yeah, yeah. Uh, concept too, man. It is. Jay was like spitting as if he was like two different people. Yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah, 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 yeah. Jay, By the way, he's rare quick, for that, man. Quick uh, discretion: don't listen to any of these songs. No, don't listen. To <laughs> no, I don't so. recommend listening None to any of them. Throw them jokes. out if you got them on CD. <laughs> throw them out the window. They frisbees. <laughs> Unless uh, we we put on. I got to shout out my boy Colton again. Unless the they're trying to create. Is, unless wow. they're trying to create. <laughs> and we're listening to where uh, Sin tainted, tainted it versus what, what's acceptable. Right. Most of it's unacceptable. The baseline is acceptable. The rest of it, <laughs> <laughs> the rest of it has been tainted. Yeah, even, even like what you were saying, the rhyme schemes behind it. Like True. All that stuff. You could take all that stuff and use it as creativity. Nah, you really can. Um, it's an amazing thing. And so what you were saying, though, so... You, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just quickly going through my um, musical passion journey to bring it up to speed. Um, so that was m- middle school. I was going to high school. Um, got my own car. When I got my first car, come on now, I need all my CDs ready. So I had <laughs> binders full of CDs. What? That's hilarious. Ready to put in the whip. That's when I was introduced to decks so you could replace your stock Dang. deck and put a, real, a different deck in, an Alpine. Come on. My first, my first car, it was we were already upgraded to Ox. Oh, so it was like so Ox was direct court. input. We had CD still, but it was like all the music was on the phone. Yep, directly to the Ox. Boom. Hey man, high school for me was it was it was such a consumption. Um, I had internet at the time, real slow. It would take a mm. long time to download a song. Oh, I but remember it, that LimeWire, LimeWire, FrostWire, stealing Lime all wire, the songs. I didn't steal none. No? No, I'm joking. I was going to say, no, I <laughs> stole them all. I stole them all. <laughs> <laughs> my computer's gone, so you ain't going to see them files. Like <laughs> FBI, North Me. Get no, off but me, man, I did so much musical stuff, bro. I loved it. I remember I got my first Saturday detention, my only one, and I was sitting there writing uh, Biggie lyrics. At, at Benny Dover? No. At uh, Benny um, Dover. East Lime High School. Saturday detention. Man, they needed to bring to those one, things bro. back. I was in it yeah. nine to one. I, so much so, I was just writing lyrics. Like, that's how that's how you know bro, it was I got, legit detention. Yes, I got one Saturday detention. Me too, Never just had one. a detention again. Because I was like, Saturday Facts. detention? Nine mom, to one. Mom, you're making me go? There's people here. They were open. We're <laughs> open right now. <laughs> the kids today would die. Oh, my goodness. Oh my Unless gosh. they was in the room together. Because you know a lot of the kids like being at school. Because yeah. their home life is is kind of wretched, so they like they prefer have, to be at yeah, school we have a if they're kids. with company. Right. If they by themselves, a... that's a different story. Amen. And and that's that's like a sad story too in, it in, in and of itself. We but have they... a couple kids that still come back from high school to Kelly after school every day. Yeah. They chill with the after school programs and they help out. That's good. Because home life just ain't all that. So that and some of the staff make <clears> such an impact that. I want to be around you. I want to. You care about me, and I I got that that vibe. So I want to come back and be around. Yeah, that yeah. That presence. Um, but either way, I digress. Um, high school. So high school, I was downloading songs very slowly. 
I would get enough to make a mixtape because mixtapes were huge. <laughs> mixtapes was like Big Mike, The Ruler, um, DJ Clue. So I love mixtapes, finding them, buying them, blah, blah, blah. Um, what I would do and call a mixtape is I would download a CD in my own style. So I'd be like Tupac versus Biggie. So I'd make half the CD with 10 Tupac songs, the other half of the CD with 10 Biggie songs, burn it and give it a little title, write on it with a Sharpie. That was my oh, wow. mixtape. There wasn't I wasn't distribute distributing them, but that was me picking all my favorite songs and and kind of sorting through the library based on styles. I remember I would do like a a, a gangster tape with like Fifty Cent and then Tupac <laughs> or just like categorizing it, you know, yeah. or maybe like a smooth one with some slow bangers. Mm -hmm. um, but I just love love consuming music, hearing it, breaking it down, then the technology behind it, obviously with the different speakers getting um, introduced. Um, my first MP3 player was a Dell something. So now getting the songs from the computer to the Dell. Wow. Loved it. Loved it. And then. That's amazing. Um, and then I had instant messenger. We used to freestyle battle on it. Type. We were typing. We were typing <laughs> bars at each other. <laughs> That's hilarious. So I remember everybody was so, uh, I just felt like everybody else was so corny. Yeah. And I couldn't catch their flow because they didn't have a flow. When yeah, I used yeah. to type, I was typing over a beat. I'm the only so I'm like, one with a flow. Da, 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 da. Yeah, my <laughs> flow, but it was written. So it was corny as yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's so funny. But I found a, it was a digital camera, the lowest of low quality. It's a little handheld thing, but it had a record audio option on it. So mm. I pressed record, put a beat on in the background. That's where I started freestyling oh, and actually recording files. Oh, Somehow snap. I was able to get those files off the, little camera yeah. onto the computer so now i got my first ever freestyle oh job. snap yeah, you don't so have those anymore i might you might i might on that see that hard drive right there oh, i've had that hard drive almost my whole here? career 2008 wow. probably this thing's a mean i remember when you gave this to dave brown he started laughing <laughs> yo it this, still this works one, this is the one that you gave us right 250 we, gigabytes that's crazy that's so funny so that's amazing um that quickly turned into uh, college now I'm freestyling after I got comfortable I was just freestyling any chance I get mostly at parties and stuff that was like the thing to do yeah if you weren't whatever you was freestyling so um man recording. I, I was so in the in the in the cut with my just freestyle career like just so behind in the, cut, like, in the closet like be, behind uh, closed doors that anytime I would freestyle like at parties or whatever it'd be like I'd have like this gladiator scene playing in my head. I'm like, finally, <laughs> I'm gonna pull my sword out. <laughs> it was like every yes, it was the Eminem, yep, Eight Mile, just like I ain't choking. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> and that's how M approached it in Eight Mile. Like remember the car, the car scene. He, they was at work at the factory, and they were by the car, like rapping some corny raps, and M like approaches it like. Real me methodical, yeah, yeah. That the word for, it, and just like yeah, real nothing. intentional, and then he comes mm -hmm. up there and just slays it. But, yeah, uh, man, man, that movie also one of my favorite movies growing up. Like, Eight Mile, I was like completely, I don't know, mesmerized by it. I think, I think that's how I, I think that's how God works. Like he, that desire in our hearts, so such a great desire, and obviously His will would be for you to do it for Him. So mm -hmm. like He got us to that point. Um, yeah, most definitely, just, man. Little tiny, like yeah, you know? curation, right? And now, and now here we are, making it ourselves, um, and just passionate about all the pieces that's kind of got us to this point, mm -hmm. like the mm -hmm. production of it, the sound of it, the mass consumption yeah. of it, and the creative gift behind it. It's it's all pieced right. together to this very point. Amen. And so to go into like a little bit of my, because you're gonna end up talking about like recording, right? Yeah, yeah. So that 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 was my that was my history. That was my history of of loving music and kind of how I got into it. Where so I'm gonna talk about a little bit like videography then. And yeah. so like all my life, loved movies, man. My life, I lived vicariously through movies. Mm. I was always home. Many always people like, do. I like yeah, I liked being home as a young kid. I remember growing up in the projects, and we'd go outside, but it was nothing like a movie to me, man. It was, I loved it. It was a, a homebody? Homebody, movie, 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 man. And so, like, I remember, like, little scenes. That's that. That's why, like, when I create now, I'll find something that is, like, it, it just speaks poetry and art to me. Mm -hmm. 
and on another level, and then I'll show it to someone. They're like, "What? That's not. That's all right, or whatever it is." But I'm like, "Can't you see this or yeah. the angle that the lights hit in this person?" And because what what's actually happening is, I'm going through these like nostalgic um, mm. little uh, episodes in my mind where I'm like, "I remember when this song played." Takes you back. Yeah, and I was I was Colton just he put me on to like um his favorite like um movie score uh, piece. Yeah. Well, that's the soundtrack, right? Yeah, yep, the soundtrack. The soundtrack of a movie. And so his favorite one is like this lullaby thing. And I was like, I was surprised. I'm like, why is this your favorite? And he was telling me because when I first seen it, it was, he, and he described the whole scene to me and mm -hmm. it made so much more sense. I was like, oh, snap. Yeah. That's why. It was just one of those, you know, you ever seen a movie where they're either recapping and and it's like it's like twenty years ago, and it's like all silent. They're not speaking, but there's music playing, and you'll see like the kids' family. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And so it's yep, like yep. going through all the like through time in it. Mm -hmm. and one of those scenes, and it just okay. like it hit him in a way, and forever that's his favorite piece. Because so, it took him back <clears throat> to a time him. and a place and a Maybe, feeling. Maybe I'm not sure, but I, that's that's why he loves that one because of that particular movie. And so like all my life, that's what I do when I record. I try to capture things that i've seen in my life that meant something to me so whether i'm doing a music video or we're not whether i'm just like shooting b-roll i'm trying to capture moments in my life that meant something to me mm -hmm. and so like all my life I, i'm I, I used to be i'm way more than i am now like I, I don't get enough time to just sit and watch movies now but i man back in the day just growing up, it was just movie after movie after movie. Like one of my favorite movies is the you last. Must have been an easy kid, like. <laughs> oh yeah, for yeah, a movie. Well, on. Gabe, I'm gonna throw a couple movies on you. Yeah, good. Yeah. That mom runs to the mom, store. Mom, leave, leave some money for for pizza. Leave yeah. some movies. Yep, absolutely. Easy. When she would when she would take like trips, she'd do that. She'd like leave us like forty bucks, and her husband would leave. Me and my brother will will order some pizzas. What you like? Um, some movies on middle school age at that time. At that, at those times, we was in both in high school. Okay, that's true. Yeah, yeah, but um, if I had a movie, man, I was chilling, mm -hmm. and so I'm. I, that's what I do. Growing up, I just watch movie after movie, and I feel like I'm trying to forever capture those scenes. Yeah, and so I mean that's and so that goes into my like uh, passion now, which is videography, man. Ever since I picked it, it's funny because I picked this camera up for my wife. Mm. And I've been using it ever since. <laughs> Hold on, this is going to be a huge transition. I, I wanted to ask a question. Mm -hmm. You said something that I think everybody can relate to is um, you used to live, or you live vicariously, you used to live, I want to say used to, live vicariously through do. movies. I you still, still do? do? Yeah. No, we don't. We live through Christ. <laughs> <laughs> All right, legalist. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean, because, you know, the good cinema will just pull you in, man. It just does something to you. That's why I yeah, said man. I don't want to claim it because most of the movies is not not necessarily good for you. It's not what your life. That's not your life. It's yeah, not my, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you don't yeah, want to. I see what you're saying. You don't want to get drawn too I much. Tell, yeah, I definitely want to tell people to stay away from staying home and just living through people. But what I mean, right? Like I, you that... watch Scarface a million times, you are gonna try to be a gangster. <laughs> yeah, for real. I, all, yeah. I used to watch all the mob, mob movies. Only, I only wanted to see mob movies, gangster movies. I and the funny thing, I like those movies. Well, what was your question? You lit. You said you lived vicariously through movies. Mm -hmm. Or you, yeah, you lived vicariously through movies. Um, I don't know. Just, just, just kind of explain that. Just go into it more. Word, word. Okay, so pretty much when I was a kid, I was obsessed with old, um, pretty much war movies, but from like the Bronze Age mm. and like when they just had swords and um, those are dope. And I just I lived through that, and that was like my like all my video games was like sword fighting games, like yeah, to the point where I would play out scenes in my backyard. Yep. And it was the funniest thing because That's how it is. there was a couple times where like one of my classmates was like, I seen you in your backyard over the weekend. <laughs> and I was the guy, I'd get automatically embarrassed. I was like, what was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> what exactly did you see? And Because I'd be going all out yeah. to the point where I saved up all my birthday uh, money, present Christmas money. Um, and I would buy suits of armor, swords, mm. things like that. I'm surprised my mom would let me buy them. But 
I was probably like in sixth and seventh grade by this time. Yeah. Um, when she let me buy the real stuff. To this point, I still have a Roman suit of armor in my mom's house. I can't wait to put it in my new place. But um, <laughs> I'd wear it. I'd wear it, and I'd like, I I'd, I'd have little sword battles, man. So like mm-hmm. when. Um, so that's what I mean. Like I would, I would uh, just live through those scenes, and then when I'm when I'm when I'm bored and I'm not watching things, I'd react those scenes to the point where uh, my mom always had two cars. I feel like I remember her always having two cars. One was always parked on the driveway, and I would drive around in the car, like without you know driving, but just yeah, sit in okay, the car okay. while I was sitting, and I'd pretend like I'm driving and. And I'm just doing things that I seen in the movie, and it was yeah. a, it was this amazing thing, man. I'm such an oddball. Nah, now that I think bro, about it, <laughs> not at all, man. I, that that's why I wanted the clarification because I I could have I'm still taking it two ways in my mind, but I would do the exact same thing. Yeah, why, yeah. I'd watch the movie, obsess over it, but for me, not only would I play it play it out, I would also play it with my action figures. Okay, so yeah. So if I'm obsessing over medieval movies, which I did often, then I'm playing it out. In the grass outside, but I'm also playing it with my toys too. So now I need all the toys to match I and mean, whatever my phase is at the time. Yeah, but it's so real. And man. also, like, let when I, well, another thing I mean by that is now that I'm thinking about it, I'm mm-hmm. trying to like define what I mean. Is like things like like you said, some some of these movies, the movies that I loved were back in time. So I would like see how they would how they would eat, how they would mm-hmm. uh, walk, like in back in. Ancient Rome and ancient Greece. One of my favorite movies. The, their these etiquette days. in Troy. Yeah, the etiquette, yeah. like how honor, like all that. Like really, yeah. I was like, I don't see that around anymore. Like, no. like this guy's the king, and and you'd betray your family for the king, and like there was like this sense of honor, right? And right. the sense of like there's this hierarchy and the set ways of how things were done. And the chivalry and, and the manners the chivalry, and the, just course, the conversation. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was something else, man. It, I lived through it, and it was like. It was amazing just watching it, and I, th- I think that's what made me such a weird kid at the same time. You ever seen uh, Role Models? I don't think so. Oh. It doesn't ring a bell. What's it about? It's about these two guys. Almost They almost go to um, prison for wiling out at work and doing some foul stuff, <laughs> um, but instead they get community service working with these kids that were like, I guess you can, like, they label them as oddballs. Um, but they needed like support. So they would be mentors to these kids in like mm. this big brother program rather than going to prison. And um one of the kids was the was the boy from Super Bad, McLovin. Oh, and so he, it's and, a newer movie. No, nah, no, nah, it was old. It was old. It's old now. And now oh, it's so old. he's a young boy when he's doing it. He was probably in high school, but they're portraying him as a younger boy. Mm. But his his obsession was going to these medieval Role playing is like a medieval role playing club where everybody oh, wow. would dress up, armored up, yeah. talk to talk, <laughs> battle, uh, rank. Like it was, yeah. it was, it, it was, was funny because different, I would, but it was dope, man. It was dope. I'm not gonna lie. The, the funny thing about that, when and what it makes me think of, you is, gotta, you gotta watch role models. Look at I'm that. Gonna everybody that's listening, don't watch it. <laughs> Gabe, you can watch it. I'm certified. Keep your other sword with you. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious because when I would like, uh, get my friends to play sword fight with me, mm-hmm. I'd be the only one going hard. I'm like doing all the moves, I'm spinning. I'm like, yeah, I've been waiting for this moment. And so, <laughs> Tra- training my oh, whole man. life for this. Training my whole life for this, man. I loved it. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, another thing was video games. So mm-hmm. it was movies and video games. And my video game of choice was Grand Theft Auto, man. I never, Who else? I never knew how I got my mom to buy these games. But she was so like... Uh, oblivious to it man she was like oh yeah. that's the game you want sure and i remember the guy at the cast were just saying this is 18 plus this is rated r whatever yeah. and she's like sure sure she just never knew what it really meant yeah it's then, easy to be ignorant <laughs> to those type of things yeah it's because you know and i i blame it on like i almost blame it on the system man my mom worked so hard bro see being a single mother sometimes for a lot of years it'd be three jobs like three, four hours of sleep a night, mm-hmm. just working, 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 job to job to job. So it was easy for my brother and I to plan to get things that we really shouldn't have right. gotten, but she just she was just working so hard to put food on the table, she never really got the time to like yeah. curate the things that we were watching. And so and there there were times <laughs> in the now that we're older, I'd like show her the games like, Mom, look, this is a game that you got me. She's like, What? <laughs> this is what you know what I mean? Like just like flabbergasted by what we got. 
Which Grand Theft Auto? So I, I man, I, I go back to the uh, bird's eye view Grand Theft Auto. Yes. And yes, I go Me back. Too, that was bro. my favorite one. The first one I ever played. I was just like, because well, it was mesmerized. GTA One and GTA Two. Yes, and so I remember that. And then I so dope. Man. The one, the one that that like shocked and awed me was GTA um, Vice City. When yeah, at yeah. first it was my cousin Charlie. Man, I went over to his house one day. He was, I was like, "What game are you playing?" He's like, "This is Grand Theft Auto Vice City." And it's funny because looking back at it now, it just looks horrible. Mm -hmm. But I remember being in his room, his TV was up on a bureau, and I was looking at it. I was like, how do they make everything look so real? And how is this and that? Tim Tim. Say hi to, say hi to the people, Tim Tim. Tim Tim, say hi. Hi. How so, you doing? Say how you doing? How you doing? Oh. Tell them what movie you were just watching. We were talking about movies. What movie did you watch? Both because it's oh, not bolt. working. Both. Oh, it's over. Ah. All right, let me come fix it, bub. Hang on one second. <laughs> I'm going to take this podcast solo Wait, real quick. Wait. <laughs> not, oh, okay, but just just be quiet. I'll listen to Gabe's talking, okay? Listen to Gabe. And so, yeah, I remember um, looking at the TV screen while he's playing and just wondering how they got the cars to look so real and the streets and the rain and the trees. And you said the sun. Vi Vice City, right? It was Grand Theft Auto Vice City, man. I love that game. Bro. Yeah, Vice City. And then San Andreas. Came so you out. skipped GTA 3 then? Nope. I played GTA 3 for a little bit, never owned it. Only played it at other people's cribs. Which one were you exposed to first, Vice City or GTA 3? The first 3? ones that I was exposed to was me and my brother exposed to the bird's eye view ones. And right, those were right. like GTA 1. And um, when you would see his legs kick out when he's running and things like that, it's hilarious, hilarious. Forgot about and that. And then so like the wasted. First, yeah. Well, that was in all of them. But when I it's first seen it, them, it was like yeah, yeah. it was different. In it those was ones. different. <laughs> and so I got a little bit of GTA three, but it was really Vice City, um, and San Andreas was. I grew up on San Andreas. Me too. Grew up on San Andreas, man. Me too. Loved it. Me and my little cousin. People David. still play that, bro. Oh, Young I, people I still, still play, play that. I still play it. I was playing it the other What'd day. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> By the grace of God. It's like... <laughs> this is where sin tainted it, and this is what's good. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I do only good things now. <laughs> CJ, you are, you are CJ saving is a philanthropist girls. now. CJ saving is... girls and <laughs> <laughs> returning stolen cars. I do it. I stop at all the red lights now. I Thanks. go when it's green. Oh That's man, that's wild. Stop at <laughs> the red lights. And so, um, yeah, man. I so Vice City, G, uh, number three, but San Andreas raised me, bro. And the music, the, the music plays a big part of that too, the man. Music, the sound, yeah. It was like a sound check to your life almost. OG Loke, oh my gosh, Son. man. That's why I love '80s music because of Vice City. <coughs> yeah, me too. Put me on. I love '80s like, music because um, of that. Video killed the radio star. <laughs> My joint is up. <laughs> Last night a DJ saved my life. Oh my, my goodness! Broken heart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's hilarious. <laughs> And um, I would never like beat the games. I would always fly over the bridges with cheat codes and and fight yeah. the cops and try to get all yeah. the good video, the good vehicles. But yeah, man, that kind of stuff made me feel like it plays a lot into like mm -hmm. the creativity now that I have and I'm trying to like capture those moments. And it's interesting because people are always like, that stuff is going to cause you to be such a violent person, a bad driver, you know, womanizer, abuser, whatever lover of guns but you know we god knew yeah. what he was doing we turned out just fine <laughs> amen but i, I don't want to <laughs> i don't want to negate Wait. the fact that it Confession. did absolutely <laughs> yes like it made me want to like i said um there's the innocent part and then there's this next part i'm gonna talk about go there. which is how one time my grandmother had to go to puerto rico for some stuff mm -hmm. and she had to leave her car in my mom's house and so as a Sixth grader, uh, from New London, from the mm. high school I live by. That's where my mom lives. Yeah, yep, yep. I took that car, drove it as a sixth grader to, um, where did I go? Where did I go? Oh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Mystic. I drove it to Mystic. Past Groton. Past Groton. Oh yeah, wow. Past Grasso Tech, all on the highway, all the way to Mystic. Drove it there like three, four times because three, of four times. Yes. 
Yep, like while, back there and back? While mom was working, yeah. So you were a good driver. I was, I was, I was, <laughs> GTA, <laughs> baby, what? I'm out here. <laughs> that is so, wild. So, but nobody GTA, saw you and like was like... Nobody saw me. That was one of the secrets. Like, And when I went back to school, I was like, look at all these young little <laughs> suckers. I'm out here driving. Yeah, little, I'm out here doing the thing. I'm, out, I'm, I'm, I'm grown. <laughs> I'm grown. And so... That is yeah, crazy. Dude, why, By the grace of yo, God. But look at God again. Like, you didn't die. You didn't get in trouble. You didn't get your mom in trouble. Get, yeah, like DCF probably would have been, you know what I'm saying? 100%. Like, 100%. God is he, grace, yeah. grace, 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 grace. But that's and if you listen, listening, don't think you'll get the same. Yeah, grace. if you're you might young get the and don't you might do get it, the wrath for the, that. Yeah, because I, I definitely, God definitely let me get that wrath a few times. Mm. I'll tell you some stories. But that's one of the things, like, that's crazy. It, it made me love guns. And I, and to the fact where I, I would obsess over getting BB guns and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, and doing some foul wild things with bb guns i'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get into that man, the statute of limitations 10 years right <laughs> that man was killing innocent gerbils <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i took that car out man like driving like that's like a 30 minute that's almost a 30 minute drive and that's definitely crazy. definitely back and forth round trips well you're not even talking like get off at the exit you probably travel through some roads um yeah like, yeah I, I go all the way to the highway wait no experience before that you mm -hmm. like only gta let's go for this yes let's press this gas I was obsessed. let's figure this out yes i was obsessed That's and i crazy. think i mentioned Impressive, it in like actually. yeah it's natural i'm a savant <laughs> what do you want me to do and so, and so like i would but i would dream about it driving I, I would pray to god when i was younger god just let me let me drive one time and then you can come you can come take mm. the whole world let me just drive that was wow. one of my stupid prayers as a young kid but I did it, man. Mom, That's a I, whole nother episode of Stupid Prayers. <laughs> and I just and it took me like ten years to tell my mom that. And she she was she couldn't believe it. Yeah. So like, you did what? I'm telling grandma right now. Right? Yeah, I told so grandma I, like I told my brother too. He was like, What? <laughs> I like they couldn't believe it. I mean, I thought she was gonna say I don't right. know, down the street. <laughs> down the driveway. Yeah. Nah, well, I know so, your the your mom's house is yeah. not really driveway. Situation, I, took, but... I took that joint, man. Oh man, I can't believe I did it. Wow, that's hilarious. Yeah. Two, three times, took it out, man. Took it way out. That's wild. What'd you get? Buy anything? <laughs> <laughs> it just went out. Joy ride. But I, I remember looking around while I was on the highway. Like I can only imagine. How, were you what tall thought. for for a Son, sixth grader? I, I was probably no. I was probably just like head over the window. Did you have any facial hair at the time? Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> baby, These people are just baby like, face. Man. Man, how stop and go is this world that they don't notice? Yeah. I'm, but you see people driving, like, some people are very oblivious when they drive. Like, very, oh, yeah. I'm going this way, blah, blah, blah. I don't even see you. Like, you know when you pass somebody, you see them, and they don't see you? You're like, There's what only... are you so focused on right now that you don't see me? <laughs> That's funny, because I was just thinking about it. There was one time that I, um, not not one time, like, two days ago, I saw one of my coworkers drive. I drove by him when I was driving home. Mm -hmm. I was like, I wonder how many times I drive by him. And it just made me think about how oblivious I actually do drive. And I'm just like trying to get to my place. Mm -hmm. I am watching traffic, but I'm never actually looking at the faces in the cars. Yeah. So maybe that's something that played into the fact that I didn't get caught. <laughs> but I can't believe it, man. Yeah, that's crazy. Now that I think about the story. It's crazy. Yeah, did that a few times. But it was all because of GTA. It was all because of um, playing that game. It made me want to do these things. And I eventually did it. Amen. So, so I'm not gonna say and say that those games aren't bad. They are horrible. Very bad. But it was something that I survived. Amen. By the grace of God, really, truly, by the grace of God. If you know anything about the Groton Bridge, it's not a place for sixth graders. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what can you say? Uh, what can you say? Oh man, I say sixth grade. It might have been fifth grade, but yeah. Kid, wow. Kid. Yeah, man. It My was a. It was a Chrysler. It was a. Chrysler Sebring, I think. Mm. Big car, man. It was huge. Big boat. One of yeah. the big floaters. I was out there like a G. That's hilarious. So, man, so bad. <laughs> obsessed with imagery and color and mm -hmm. quality film. And so it makes me, that's what drives me today. I'm trying to get like, and I always live on and the And you're abstract. trying to capture, not to cut you off, and you and you you appreciate the the moments the feeling, yeah, the feelings, it sounds that. like. Yeah, and it's so funny because I'm so limited right now at what I can and what I know how to capture. And mm -hmm. I'm just starting out. So I'm, I have these like vast ideas or depictions of what the final product I want it to look like. 
And then just because of like my knowledge and know-how and equipment, I'm like, I can't get there yet. Mm -hmm. Eventually I will, but it's like this forever a driver. Cause I'm like, I don't like, it's funny cause every, and I think you could probably relate to this in your own um, passions. When I'm doing something, I love it. Mm -hmm. As soon as it's produced and out, I don't like it anymore. I'm like, no. Like you're super critical about it. Yeah. Like all the videos I've ever done, I don't like them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> once I once I do the next one, because I notice all the things I could have done, mm-hmm. should have done, missed things like that, um, and so it's like a forever process. But I think if you if it's not that way, then it's not right. You know what right. I mean? I feel like you should always want to su- uh, succeed more and surpass your your old work. Right? Yeah, yeah. Would you say the same thing for your uh, like engineering? Because I know you've you probably switched up your method multiple times. It's just learning new things, and it's crazy that. <coughs> being self-taught being self-taught um i i I always look back at how much i i didn't like even seek to learn i kind of just stumble upon little tips and tricks every now and then i would intentionally sit down and like try to learn something youtube something Mm -hmm. but even then i'd get it'd be a 30 minute video i'd get like eight minutes in find oh that sounds good let me try that stop the video never return to it so I'm a, I was yeah, just, I'm a culprit for that. Right? You just add little tools to your toolbox mm-hmm. throughout the years, being self-taught. <laughs> um, so with music, for many, many years, so you got to think I've been doing this, working in Pro Tools for 10 years. So with music, um, early on and for a long time, maybe like five years, six years, even seven years, oh. I was very, I'm like you, very critical. Like, I don't like this no more. Um, But maybe like within the last three, four years, it got to the point where it's like, I don't like it at first, mostly because I played it out trying to edit it and get it to sound right. Mm -hmm. So that's the learning process of figuring out how to use these tools, figuring out the sound I wanted, figuring out the equipment. Mm -hmm. And then... um. And then by the time I'm I'm done with the actual product, I'm like, eh, I don't like this no more. I'm comparing it to other people's sounds. Yeah, like, I don't that's like the that worst either. Thing to do. But now it, this is as of real recent, and you helped me with this by you and a couple other people with the <laughs> feedback to with the feedback for um for our latest projects. They're like, yo, yours that's up there. Like the quality is up there. So yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. that was like the confirmation I needed. And then, and now I'm like paying attention to that. Like before I wasn't the same stuff that we have out now, I wasn't paying attention to it like that until somebody said it. And now I'm like, now I agree. It is word, up there word. and I can, and I can see it. I can hear it. Amen. amen. I can hear where we lack too, but I'm like, I'm, I'm accepting it knowing that we, we finally got to a point where it's like, I can hang with the big dogs and, the equipment is finally leveled up. But, man, it's that 10,000-hour rule, like getting the right equipment, spending the time, learning the stuff, mm-hmm. practicing and recording and recording other people. Like it's all led up to where we're at now, and it's and it's a lot of trial and error, right. you know? And, yeah, and I look 100%. back, like if I went to school for audio engineering, would I just knock it out the park every time? Maybe, but 90% of it is the performance, and that performance well, is— because you didn't go to school, right? You just mm-mm. all self-taught. All self-taught, but 90% is the performance. And yes, that means the performance of the artist, but the other part is your signal chain. So what mm. are you using to capture the performance of the, of the artist? And that is the room acoustics, then the microphone, the microphone amplifying source, your audio interface, your computer, then your sound effects, and then knowing how to use all of that. Word, so word. knowing what wow. to turn your levels to, knowing... What sound effects sound best? Yeah, hearing, being able to um, hear in your head what you want it to sound like, and then knowing the tools to to get it to that point. Mm, amen. So. Yeah, I I agree, I agree, and I can um, I can say it's the same thing with video work, man. Just a little bit that I've been uh, doing now. One hundred percent more. Of my next steps are just filming, just random things, just mm-hmm. filming. To get that hold, experience. Yeah, getting the steady cam, um, uh, editing so I can like mm-hmm. just push projects in and out quicker. Um, manual focusing on things. Like one of the things is sitting by a tire swing, pushing the tire swing and just manual focusing it. 
Let's get a tire back swing. Back and forth, back and forth. I got trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> we one can of the find training. A tire. That's one of the training things. Like, mm. like um, something that a lot of people don't think about is the uh, NFL. Um, mm-hmm. That's all manual focus. So when they're looking at the ball going through there, that's some guy wow. on the manual focus following it. And that's how they train, tire swings, back and forth, getting that focus, wow. learning it like it's your second nature. And so that's something I have to do. I haven't been doing it yet. Um, it's just practicing, 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 just shooting, just to shoot. And um, really just filming everything you can film. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm going to start doing probably like within the next couple of days is just pulling out the camera. Um, because it doesn't make sense to just go out there and um, say whenever we want to book a video shoot, like, I shouldn't pick up my camera for the first time on a on a shoot since my last shoot. So same thing with you. Um, I would say probably. I don't know if it's true or not, but you you're gonna be wanting to just record things and just learn it, right? Especially because well, you're ten years in. Yeah. I'm like a few months in, so. I do like different. to get ready though. Yeah, you do. At least want at to. least gear wise, I want to be set up, make sure everything's smooth and ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, like that's one thing that I noticed. Like I was just doing this wave promo shoot. I got all these lights. <laughs> Show up to the set, no light stands. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, why didn't I think of this? <laughs> I have all these lights, there's no light stands. Yeah. So I'm taping lights to ladders and and walls, and I'm like, oh. so now I got the light stands. Now I get the light stands. So little by little, but that's like the learning. It's a journey. That's it's thing. I w- that's one thing I would have known because I knew I knew the shoot. I knew the thought process behind the shoot. Mm-hmm. I could have just put myself as a subject. And lit up myself and like that's another thing I'm learning right now is three point cinematic lighting. Where you have three points of light and it just brings a cinematic feel instead yeah. of like the one light in front. Right. And so you get some of the black lighting, you separate the subject from the back, you get from the front. And so these are things that you just gotta get do it by practicing. Practice it. And so like trial a, trial and error because Yeah, and so even like, setting up those lights is like, eh, it didn't that's work as well thing. as I yes, thought it would. Yes, exactly. You wanna get those angles so where you know it, no, I know when when I said this forty five degree angle is mm-hmm. gonna be perfect for the back one in the back, and like that's the first time when I brought the, the first time I brought the red, blue, and green lights. You just let me borrow, hold yeah, on yeah. to, brought those out. Super overpowering. I gotta learn those. I'm not not there. They're yet. overpowering. They're overpowering for um. I gotta put so I'm learning. I gotta put a diffuser in front of those because they're powerful. They man. only got one, and it's only one power level. It's yeah, on. it's you can't on, dim them. on yeah, or off. They go hard, <laughs> man. So I'm like, these go hard. I gotta get some diffusers. Mm-hmm. And so what that is is just like things you put in front of the lights to like dim it down. And so, the, but yeah, like I said, learning, learning, learning. So that's my next process. But to talk about like this and like, uh, well, can I ask a question about learning? Go ahead. Um similar to me are you are you um you're self-taught so you know i'm assuming a lot of youtube a lot of google tons of youtube no no real google except for like products google, like yeah product product reviews and but stuff yeah like um youtube 100 percent. i mean man it's weird because like i said i was gonna get into it so i bought this camera mm-hmm. um because my wife she always yeah, had yeah. a passion for vlogging she wanted to vlog her cooking she wanted to vlog makeup. She's big into makeup. Um, she wanted to vlog these things. And, mm-hmm. and it was that was her huge excuse. That was it. It was like, I would always ask her, I'm like, babe, why aren't you going hard? Why aren't you doing this? I need a vlogging camera. That was always the thing. And I was like, and once I got a little bit of money in the bank, I was like, I'm going to gift her this because then she can go into her passion. Right. And right. I end up getting her the camera and it just sits on the shelf for a month. Two months, three months, and I'm like, really? It was that long that that I you think had it. So I feel like it's been. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe it's one week, two week, three week. <laughs> Hour, but I was like, two hours later, <laughs> she ain't touching it. <laughs> she ain't touching it. Took it. <laughs> no, so I want to say it was a couple months. It was staying, and you know, she would pick it up every now and then. And I was like, yeah. I was like, man, let me. I don't even know how I started it, bro. All I know is well, that June, June was the um. Freestyle help comes from freestyle video, so right. It was June. You said that was the first video. I want to say no, because I think we did the visual verses before then, wasn't it? Yeah, probably. I don't know why I thought you said that was the first one. It was all that month. That was, it was all like when June. I said that. That was my first like full verse hook. Oh. You know, all that video. Tim Tim pulling. And so. um 
I'll just let you cut this. Oh, bam, sleeping. Okay, I will, Tim Tim. We'll be quiet. Right. And so, um, yeah, so I got her the camera. <laughs> I got her the camera and I'm noticing she's not using it. And I said, well, let me just use it until she wants to use it. I'm like, let me just use it until she, wow, that sounds a lot better. <laughs> I don't know. It's just sad. You got to know it. I'm I upset didn't now. catch it. I'm upset. Um, yeah, tighten it. Wow, this is a lot better. I feel like let's just throw the whole podcast away because this sounds a lot better now. <laughs> I'll just boost it up. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, get her the camera. I'm realizing she's not really using it. And I'm like, well, she's probably just shy with it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, well, in the meantime, I'm going to use it um, yeah. for for anything. And then all of a sudden, man, I feel like this is this is why I feel like it's God. Because mm -hmm. I, ne I always wanted to vlog. Because that, that was my main source of entertainment, and I always thought yeah. maybe I could pick up the camera and do it. And I would, and I did a couple. Like if you look at my like my old YouTube channel, I have like how to tutorials where I'm fixing really? my wife's thing, or I'm I made a few videos of my motorcycle and going up to Main Trip with a few friends. That type of stuff is fun, man. Yeah, and so it's almost I, like you do that stuff before realizing there's a whole craft and a whole. Yeah. Um, entrepreneurship yeah, behind like, it. Yes. Like we just do it just to do it. Oh, Same I'm a, thing I'm like when you when trip. you were when you recorded the, the first freestyles on the you were yeah. just like the tip of the iceberg of what is a whole industry. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, pretty much. And so like that's what it was. So I always had that like maybe I could do it, but when she wasn't using the camera, I'm like, Well, I just got this camera. I forget what are the first things I ever did um with the with the camera, but Lo and behold, here I am now, just mm -hmm. like making like full production stuff, and like um filming interviews, all all kinds of stuff. And how long was that? What were we talking? May of Sheesh. last year. Well, help come from I had the camera probably like, a f it was it was that June, March, April, May, June. End of May was um when we went to uh Willamanic. So it was her birthday. I got it for her birthday, and hers is June sixteenth. Okay. So probably maybe a year before help come from, maybe. Wait, a whole year before that? I don't know. Maybe not. I don't think so. No, you got it. Twenty nineteen. You got that camera, right? Nah. I feel like I remember you telling me about maybe, it. Maybe, probably. It's funny. I could just pull up my receipt. Just pull it up. Yeah, just pull the receipt up. What am I doing? <laughs> well, I, I last summer. I do want to pull it up. Was when we did now. everything. <laughs> I feel like I remember you saying like I got this camera for Stephanie. She not using a thing. I'm mad. No, and um, she's beat. I'm, take, I'm taking it. <laughs> and <laughs> and, and it's funny because now and that's our joke now. The joke is that it's my camera. And I'm like, no, babe, it's still your camera. I'm just using <laughs> it. I'm just using it right now. Um, You're leasing it. <laughs> I'm leasing it from her. Uh, here it is. I'm pulling out the receipts. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to say 2019, June. 16th. June 7th, 2019. Wow. Wow, Amen. so it's, the show begins. it's not even been a year. So you waited two weeks. <laughs> yeah, I waited two weeks. <laughs> That's hilarious. A month and months, and she wasn't using it, and there was dust on the camera. <laughs> waited two weeks, picked that, uh, thing up. that thing up. And so here we go. Like I feel like I got like mad equipment now after. Deep, deep, um, a deep passion for it, man. Yeah, and then I'm like, but it's funny because I remember... Looking at local cats have mm. um, professionally produced videos and thinking, how am I ever going to get to that point? So you see, you notice yourself being drawn to that. G being drawn to like how. I don't have money. Mm -hmm. I don't have connections. But I want this music video. I remember, shout out K the Creator. Like, yeah, yeah. yo, I, I remember talking to you, Tim. Like, yeah. I, I got, want a video yeah, by you said her. you want to do a K the Creator yeah, video. Yeah, I want to do a K the Creator video. Or, or this video, and then even like uh, THR Productions, Brian's and mm -hmm. sick with the camera. I was like, I want one of his videos, and um, and I would, I would, I remember literally sitting down. How, how do you get that on film, and and how do you, how do you get like the person to sound so good, but you're filming it, yeah, and yeah. you don't hear any of the outside stuff, and how do you get all these transitions in? And I, I remember being baffled at it. Yeah, and you, then were now drawn, being, you were drawn to that. Yeah, and then now being behind the curtain, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, this is how you do it. And that's how they did it. And this right. is exactly how they did it. And it's so much easier thinking about it. 
It's but, so um, it's so attractive to you. It is, and so this, like back to why it's a thing from God because I feel like it wasn't it wasn't that it wasn't always on my mind to be a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. I always loved film. I always loved music, but it was never um, on my mind to be a creator. Um, it was always subconscious, I guess, because now yeah. it's it's alive in me, right? And I want to do these things. And I want to do them to like the best. I want to be Spielberg out here with these music videos and these yeah. interviews. And I want to, I want like I'm I'm getting these vintage cinematic lenses because I know that no one else is doing it. No one else is putting lenses from 1970 on a 2019 camera body. Like no one's yeah. doing that except for the top pros who only know about it. Right. And I'm getting the information from them because I'm only following a few of them. Mm -hmm. And um and so I'm trying to go different ways about getting getting different unique shots that no one else is doing almost even like that's why i started doing the visual verses because i'm like everybody's doing music videos no one's doing full production visual right. verses let's do that and so like i'm i'm like trying very, to very very forward thinking yeah and so i'm like let's let's do let's do these kinds of things um and so yeah like that's i feel like and i want to do it all for the glory of god i want to create mm -hmm. In a way, but I want to do it excellent. I don't want to just do corny. No, right. I don't want to just, oh, we have this. And this. that's why, like, sometimes I'll throw projects away because they don't sound right. Or, like, I, um, if the audio is not right or mm -hmm. if, the, if the lips don't line up perfectly, I'll, yep. I'm like, yep. no, I don't want it. I don't like it because I want to do it excellent. I, wanna, I just right. want it to be perfect. And I'm not there yet, but I'm going to get there. So. Right. And it's yeah. only been, you said June seventh. That's crazy. Not even I thought a year, it was coming like, up on a year. I feel like it was forever. Yeah, but what a journey, man! So that that's gonna lead us into the the where we are moving forward. We talk about how we where this Why passion no stems from, where we're at now. We've obviously shot many videos, many um, visuals. We've done vlogs, mm -hmm. um, behind the scenes, full sermons, Bible studies. Um, so that's currently, but moving forward, like my brother just said, YNL Media. Um, mm -hmm. But real quick, um, you were just saying something about videos. Oh yeah, um, I remember like because you were talking about back in the day watching people's artist videos. Yeah, like local artists. I'm, yeah, I'm assuming because we're not watching. I mean, you you see um, like BET and and MTV videos is like. I mean, I wasn't thinking on that level at at any point. Mm. But locally, coming up into the music scene, I remember music videos was such a such a platform, like or such a level to reach. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, we got to do a music video. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We got to do a music we video. We have to do it. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. But it was such a such a like struggle to find a decent camera person for a decent price that was at all reliable there was so much like oh my computer crashed or the hard drive this or like i lost all my footage like that, that was, was like my... <laughs> always the thing bro you know it... what it's hilarious my first time trying to get a, a music video mm -hmm. their excuse was the files are too big and now that i'm doing it myself i'm like that's a lie I'll fight you. there's no way because i'm <laughs> doing all my videos on a samsung galaxy yeah I'm not I'm, I'm not even on a macbook yet yeah. And so I'm not even on a computer. I'm like, that definitely a lie. There's no way that those videos are too big. But they're but they're, they're they're source, but they might be using a uh I was gonna say a PC, but they're whatever computer they're using, they might just not have been able to handle it. Like they got too much other junk. So like it's definitely a learning curve behind it all was, of it. Yeah, it is. It is. Like I and like I said, like I just feel like I've been blessed to like just fall on certain YouTubers and certain videos, mm -hmm. like um where to go. Like I just happened to to come across like what's the best phone uh, platform for video right. editing, and and it just happened to be that it only works for Android phones, and like mm -hmm. and like when I show people like Lachelle, they're like, "Yo, you could do all that on your phone," and, and that's why I knew, oh, I have Facts. something because if like Lachelle, I look at her like one of the top top around here. She's mm -hmm. a beast out here, yeah. And so if she's like admiring some of my software i'm like oh snap i got something she's also do very it. humble she's very yeah. good at encouraging <clears throat> and complimenting other people and 100%. appreciating your style and that's what i think separates um kingdom minded people from other people mm -hmm. from regular cats is the fact that no competition no there is no we're not scared of it mm -hmm. matter of fact go all 
Go ahead, do your thing, right. man. I yeah. hope you shine. Do it. Yeah. I'm still gonna go hard on my little thing. Yeah, get that red yeah. camera. Uh -huh. I'm gonna keep rocking his M50. Get that seventy thousand dollar camera. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I love it. And I wasn't playing though, bro. When I when I you asked me how was this video, I was like, bro, five six years ago, I would have been struggling to find a camera person, and I would end up paying five hundred dollars to kind of like it. When you just banged it out on your phone in like 40 minutes. Yeah, that video, I was like, this is, this is almost too good to be true. Because I always, like I said, in the moment, I love it. I'm like, oh, snap, this is mm -hmm. pretty dope. And then I feel like, um, one thing, it's funny, because I've always felt this way with you. I feel like you just tell me things are dope because you don't want to tell the truth or something like that. Yeah. I feel like you're always hiding. Um, like you don't want to hurt I, I the get kid. that vibe too. That, that's like, why you asked me again, like, what do you really, like, what do you really that's think? That's why I, I be telling you, I'm like, with all, like, critique like give me your worst answer yeah and then when you still be like yeah it's pretty dumb like, he's lying he's li <laughs> babe look then, look what tim said he's lying to me <laughs> and then of course like the feedback I, I felt like you were looking for i'm like i don't know these type of terms <laughs> it's like i ain't been studying film it's clear and the words lined up uh, i love up. it that, that's <laughs> good for me for, nah as but as in scenes though transit i'm big on transitions i will say so that had a lot of a lot going on yeah, yeah. Which to me my... that means a lot. And, and that was the first video. More I looking back, I tried to think I tried to think from your perspective. I was like, cinematic wise, what is he what does he like about it? Or what was he going for? Now I do see that. Because you I know, there's it. that initial, oh, it lines up and it's clear. Music video. Because that's just where I came from. Like Amen. everybody's trash at videos. So everybody. To, <laughs> so put it to put it in perspective, the things I'm looking for is like the way that the light enters the lens mm -hmm. and what it shows on the flickering and flaring. Like my favorite part of the music video we just did for um, Child of the God, In the intro is just uh, when you're flipping through and then seeing like the manual um, focus from your face to the Bible and how you're going through, how mm. it focuses in, like that kind of thing. I love that kind of stuff, and that's what I'm going for because I could live in that moment. Yeah, like I could just replay that that two second clip over and over and just appreciate the art. Yeah, and so I mean it's hard because I'm going for those things. But that's not what the industry is looking for. You know what I mean? So it's well, like a never-ending <clears throat> battle. Same thing with music, though. It's good to ask for feedback because you're going to be encouraged when I tell you that right now I'm telling you that the whole to me the whole video caught that vibe. Mm. So if that's what you were going for, the whole video was consistent with that. Word, word, it wasn't word. like this, this one's silky smooth with the lens flares and this part was quick, stale, slow, like... Each scene was consistent word, word, in that word. video. Now that I'm thinking from your perspective, because I wasn't thinking like that, but now I'm thinking like it. So moving forward, there's something that somebody else picks up from audio and video that they love, and they he when you hear that feedback, at least for me, I'm like, word. Yeah. And when somebody tells me they like this punt, this line, yeah, I go back yeah, to the song yeah. just to listen to it 50 times to see what they liked. 100. And I love it. I'm sure it's the same for videos. 100. percent Amen. So yeah, man. So I'm trying to create for the kingdom, trying to go hard. Um, and why no media, man? I feel like we're so that's what I love about this ministry. We're so versatile, bro. Mm -hmm. we do so many things by the grace of God, man. It feels so good. And so, Amen. but going on to you, you want to like actually record other artists, right? Yep. So why no media? That's that's gonna be our, our branch ministry where we, you know, produce other forms of media rather than ourselves. Mm. Um <laughs> For the audio in my heart, I'm I'm obsessed with uh I wanna say live recording, that's like the umbrella, but it's really more singer songwriters, what you what what the audio world classifies it as. And that means there's a lead singer and maybe a couple uh, musicians backing <coughs> that lead singer. It could even just be a lead singer with a backing track. So I A, I love singers, female vocalists more. More so. I, I really love female vocalists. Mm. But singer-songwriter combinations is how Lauren Daigle blew up. And it would be her and a guitarist. Or her and a pianist. Two people. A live take, I'm assuming. Um, but I, now you're teaching me that it could could have been recorded and dubbed over. But um, either way, uh, for me, so what that looks like for me is uh, recording the vocalist, getting a silky smooth, powerful recording of uh, of the vocals. Um, and then picking up the instruments, too. So I've been studying. And the crazy thing, I, I'm, I'm doing what you're doing. I'm, like, studying for the future. Like, how do I do this even though I'm not going to... I may not, I don't know when I'm going to do it. Yeah, but I'm yeah. still learning how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I've been studying how to mic a drum kit. I don't have a drum kit. I've never mic'd a drum kit. 
but I'm yeah. studying how to. Do, <coughs> I'm studying how to do it. Um, how to mic a a a bassoon a uh, what's those giant uh stringed instruments? Oh, those are called. Oh, why am I forgetting it? How to mic that? Bozo, ba- buffoon, bassoon. No, it's like <laughs> <laughs> buffoon. Buffoon. No, we sound real. Mic up these buffoons. We don't know nothing. We sound like I sound like a buffoon Elbow. right now. T- Elbow. No, it's oh, elbow. <laughs> so a musician is like you, you guys are stupid, right? We're it's rappers. A, it's a this. So we rap. <laughs> we do two track instruments. I know exactly what you're talking. It's a big old guitar. Big old yeah. guitar. You hold it. A stringed yeah. instrument. So I'm, yeah. I'm like micing that. Micing acoustic guitar versus electric acoustic. Versus electric guitar versus bass guitar, learning how to mic all these, how to mic a choir, like mm. all these things. So my how heart. How do you mic a choir? Because I'm I'm interested um, to know like how the so, Kanye. So these did mics it. we're using right now are are um, cardioid. Direct the direction is straight straight in front of it. So to to for so you to, fifty of those. No no no. So we're using dynamic. So it, okay, fifty would be everybody holding a microphone. We can do that. That's okay. an option. Or you get microphones with a bigger pickup pattern. So the ones we're using, the pickup pattern is right in front of it. So you got to point this joint at your mouth to get the best pickup. If you get a different microphone, it picks up a much wider space to um, capture sound. Okay. So like we're Putting looking at a, in front of them. Right. We're looking at a microphone right now that picks up right in front. The, yeah. To the left and to the right and behind this microphone, it's, re, it's literally rejecting sound to make it quieter and better for vocals. Oh, okay. We could get a microphone that has a 180 pickup pattern. We could have somebody in front and back and record Omni that. Omnipositional. That's when, um, 180. Omnidirectional. There's a different word for that. Omni is the ones that pick up from all angles. So we okay. hold the mic. It's picking up something like from front, left, right, side, front, side, back, back, side to side. <clears throat> so that would be good for a choir or just something with a wide pickup pattern. Depends on how you position it. So that's the other thing. So we get a bunch of microphones that have a wide pickup pattern and position them throughout the choir with your lead singers <coughs> or your soloist holding the good mics okay. up close. So you would get like a choir effect in the background, but your vocalist, your uh, lead, your solos could stand out a little bit. So my, okay. my heart is, um, yes, the singer-songwriter co- singer song combination, but I also want to be able to record a full band and a full choir. Mm. Um and I love that. I absolutely love it. Wow. Um, so that there's not too too much else about that except I I just love no, that's it. Amazing, I, I really man. love I, I really love the talent that that's behind it too. Yeah, and we're gonna Big, be doing that soon, bro. We will be. We're this we're weekend. doing it this weekend. We're yep, actually I doing can't that. wait. Um, be my first S- time doing S-D-R, it. SDR, Sarah Dante R- Rachel. Yeah, yeah. Or RDS. It's RDS. The, RDS. Rachel Dante I was Sarah. Look them up before we Shout out to them. You don't even know them, but they about to drop. Oh, they about, about to, they about to record to their hard. first project. So yep. they want drums. They want a sax. Of, no drums, a trumpet, maybe piano. Drum sax. Drums and sax. Dante okay. does sax. Drum, but they want drums too. They want drums. Oh, he does yeah. sax. You're right. Drums you're right. Not sax, trumpet. I think not trumpet. Drums, sax, maybe keys because um Sarah plays the piano. Definitely acoustic guitar, and then obviously some singing. So that'll be my my first shot at what I'm passionate about doing, and it's 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 awesome how God yeah, has RDS us. music one two RDS. three RDS yeah. one two three. Look them up on Instagram. Yep, they're coming, bro. They're mm-hmm. coming with heat, and we're gonna record it. Why I know media is gonna record it. Yes, video, video and audio. Absolutely. But like you were saying, like you and I both have these. We're introduced to it, and we're 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 intrigued by it, and then it becomes somehow along the path. It turns into a burning desire, yeah, so yeah. much so that we're planning ahead for things we haven't uh, approached yet. But and I was planning ahead for what I'm about to do this weekend, so it's here. Like I was getting yeah. ready for it, and now it's here. So again, God's providence, man. He is totally in control and leading us with these desires, and that's how I'm reassured that it's a good thing. And one thing I wanted to mention is that what we're doing is serving others and providing value to their, to their lives. So that's how we. That's a, a part of that love neighbor aspect is Amen, man. we're Absolutely. able to provide a value. We're able to serve somebody in this capacity. So we do it. Think about it, and, man. Think about it. So um, 100% professional recording, mm-hmm. professional videography, as many takes as they want, as many time, as much time as they want. We're driving there. Like we're offering thousands of dollars in, in yeah. production costs for, for free. 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 It's amazing, I, and we do it lovingly, and and I like I can't wait. I'm so excited to do it, 
And so that's like what separates the kingdom from the rest of the people. You know, I mean, people would be like, money talks. What, like, how much money are you going to give me to, to be there? Right, right. That would be the first question. I remember um, I remember Dave would tell me these things, like when he's like trying to book artists. Mm -hmm. um, he said, especially the local guys, the first question they have is, how much money am I going to give them? Rather than like, you know, like anything else, it's always money. When he would book book when them he, for I, anything. Like as the talent or as... No, no, I think when he would, when he tried to like literally go to New London local artists and say, hey, I'm doing a gospel thing. Would you want to like do some kind of thing for the... Yeah, yeah. He said he would reach out to cats and that's the first question. Like how much money is in it? And blah, blah, blah. And I get that. You're trying to get your bread up. But at the same time, I feel like most of these cats, like... One of the things I learned is they're trying to reap without sowing. They're trying to reap without sowing. And that's what I that's one of the things I learned from Charlemagne the God, mm -hmm. a lowercase G. Um yeah. he's like, yo, you gotta go out there and do f stuff for free. Yeah. That you gotta do it. It's do it for free. And yeah. I I love doing it for free. Yeah, I think about making money too, but at the same time, man, this is all wisdom and experience. Right. Like I wanna I wanna get as many gigs. Shout out Marcus Robinson. I was just talking to, I'm talking to him now. Oh, good, good. Um and he was telling me like so I was like, yeah, I'm about to do my second gig, paid gig. I was him about the one. And he's like, oh, he's like, yo, that's fire, bro. I'm like, I'm on Wait, like, what was the one? What was the first one? Was was um Thames River. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thames River. And You're then right. now this other church one, mm -hmm. paid gigs. Right. And then um he was like, Yeah, I think I've done like five hundred gigs paid, blah, blah, blah. He's telling me like he, me he's what full I time do. with it. Yeah, yeah. He's that's it. He might get he moved mm -hmm. states to do this thing. Right. And he's like telling me like what the next equipment he's gonna get. He's gonna get something called like an easy rig. That's like a three thousand dollar piece of equipment. I'm wow. like, Shh, can't wait. But yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, cause I cause I know I'm gonna get there one day. Yeah, but it's, yeah. a, it's amazing just talking to other cats. But that's the one thing. Um, like I said, I want to go back to the kingdom. Is like that's how we move. We yeah. we we big up our next people. People are next mm -hmm. to us, and that's how it's supposed to be. If they go up. They're going to bring us up with them. Right, you know right. I mean, that's how the kingdom moves. That always used to be the mentality uh, with local hip hop is, man, I got you. Because when you blow up, I'm I'm right there with you. People, mm -hmm. artists used to always say that coming by processions, man. Especially to the engineer. They're like, yo, when, when I when I make it, son, I got you, bro. Yeah. I promise you. You right there with me. And, and then lo and behold, you're not even in the credits. You're not even in the credits. <laughs> and they're not even credible. Yeah. <laughs> Um man, me, me, uh, video though, video is big money though. Like you could, you could drop, you could do one great project and you set for the month. Mm -hmm. So oh yeah, man, oh yeah. Like I'm like one of the guys I listen to. Um, he'll make you know like two, three thousand dollars on on one video, one music video. Depending, he said some of the, some of his gigs was ten thousand dollars. Like that's the budget that the artist has, and he'll probably bring home four of that ten. Mm. so he's doing like the bigger the bigger the artist the more the budgets and stuff like that yeah and so like i'm learning like what to say when you ask you know when you're setting your price like the terminology things yeah. like that just things that i'm grateful man i'm grateful for that like i don't know man i feel like uh if i was doing this on my own wit it'd be a lot harder yeah and i know it'd be a lot harder yeah I'd just be doing it for self and it's it's great to know that that we have God in all of this, and that's why I mean I keep mentioning the journey, but it's it, it's it was all it is all necessary. It's necessary in your growth. It's necessary in your understanding that it's bigger than you. It's necessary in understanding that God is just intentional how He does things. And it's like I need you to get this or meet this person or fail here, so I can get you to see this other mm -hmm. part. And that's that's what I'm seeing day by day and. It's only growing, but me, my flesh it gets in pain. Are you gonna cut all these calls? Yeah, out? yeah, I cut them. That's, that's why I stopped cutting them out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, son. So, like on a, on a sermon, let's say Jesse preaches an hour mm -hmm. and a half, it'll be four to anywhere from four to six hours to edit that. If that's I wanna, tough. if I wanna, well, not sermons, but for like truth seekers, where I'm putting in like transitions and photos that go yeah. above it, that'll be like four to six hours. And then, um, depending on like the music, like music videos have been surprisingly easy. Yeah. Because once I line your vocal with your lips up, mm -hmm. it's like smooth sailing. You definitely got a system down for those too. Yeah, yeah. It's been easier to get those out there. Mm -hmm. But when I have to sit through, um, and so like I have to remember certain words that Colton says mm -hmm. while I'm shooting, and say, okay, that means there's there's gonna be a, a art clip that I gotta put in. 
So I got to stop and an hour or two of video turns into six hours of editing. Yeah. So it's been, so I can't wait to get a computer and see the difference because it's got to <clears throat> right, be a difference, right. I feel. A little bit of a learning curve, but it's the next yeah, level. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. I almost want to stay on my phone. I know when I when I get this MacBook, I'm gonna have to learn. I hate it. Learning. I'm gonna have to, oh, I wanna. What I wanna do is Adobe. So like a, I know Adobe, Adobe Premier, intimidates Adobe Pro. me. We had it. We, when we had it, I was afraid. I was, I was doing video. I was like, "Yo, what am I doing?" It's <laughs> got everything on it. Literally, like we yeah. had it. We had yeah. what the pros use, and we're like, "Nope, mm-hmm. get it away from me." <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with Reason Ten. Reason Ten <laughs> sitting with dust on scary. it right now. Reason <laughs> scary, man. But although I've been thinking about that a lot lately, which is a good sign. God yeah, is, God is, me too. God is mysterious with that. Well, that's good. Do it, but man. What, Do your what, thing. Oh, we're doing it. So what? I, what I'm seeing with all this is um, being good stewards and paying attention to things like um, sewing, doing things for free, gaining experience, mm-hmm. studying the equipment, trial and error, um, and and just piecing together things like what I've been attracted to in the past, whether it be sound or visuals. Um, and also piecing together feedback from other people and other creatives to figure out what's good, but also very important, creating your own sound or your own visual. Yeah. So you've been saying that a lot. You want your, your visuals to stand out. And, yeah. um, I'm trying to create a signature sound when we, when we edit songs. So it just shows me that we're being led by God and intentional about operating in a, in a level of excellence that we feel would bring glory to his kingdom. And, um, people will receive it that way. Like, like, so while we are in this get, get out of the Christian box mode, we are Christians by identity and that way, and not that way, but when people find out these guys are Christians, like, Oh that's, wow. Yeah. They, they believe in Jesus. Like, I, I don't know how to word it, but like, that's, I want them to to at the end of the line be like, oh, they Christian and they rep for the Lord. Oh, oh, these guys believe in the Lord. They believe in Jesus. They do everything for God. Like mm-hmm. I want that to to be a part of the I want the, that to be in the conversation. I want, yeah, I want that to be in the conversation. Yeah, on the thought you know? process. But that's that's one thing I wanted to get to again, talk on talk on it a little bit. Every time I tell people that we rap, I feel like I have to put in the so I'm like, yeah, we rap. We do gospel hip hop, right? I know. And then I, I after, throw it in there quickly too. I'm and like, then after, yeah, we do I'm Christian like, hip hop. Like, Why did I do that? Why did I just say we rap? Well, how about this too, though? You say you're a rapper. There's a whole gang of stigma in it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, are you a rapper? Automatically think. Oh of yeah, that's studio another life. part. Yeah, yeah. You smoking and drinking. You trying to make it. Blah blah blah. But for me, when I throw in the Christian in there. It sounds more like politi- politically correct, like oh, more respectable almost. Yeah. Like oh, okay. It's, it's funny you mention that because I, I feel Which the same way. Which all those way. feelings to me is wrong because I'm yeah, even using yeah, Christian yeah. not not the way it should be. Right. I'm almost using Christian as like, um, if you're using like, good job. like if you're, Pat sell, on the if back. you're selling oh. if you're selling a used car, it's got the Carfax. You know what I <laughs> yeah, mean? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, no, no, don't worry. It's good. It's good. It's got it's the okay. Carfax. You good? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good, man. Oh, this is amazing. Is it a rap? I feel like it's a it's rap. It's a rap, man. It's a rap, man. YNL Media from now till infinity, man, to now Amen. till Jesus comes back or till he takes us home. That's it. I just see growth and um just a deeper passion and uh one thing I that has been ringing in my heart and a little bit throughout this uh podcast is I want to get to the point where we we just we were we been blessed. Our ministry's been blessed and um now I can just kind of just cater to other people. Like, there's going to be a point where I don't want to rap no more and I can just record kids. They don't know nothing about it. So I'll put them on and just blessing other people with this gift even more so. So, you know, there's going to be a time when our ministry and our rapping is we don't, we're not, we're not about that no more. So we, we want to do this for other people. We want to bring up other Amen. artists. We sign other artists. We sign other videographers. We mentor other people. Mm-hmm. So, that's the direction I see in it. I seeing it. I see it being just a true ministry where we're really getting disciples and really um, teaching other people and adding value to so many people's lives. And it's exciting. I can't wait for it. Yeah, man. Ninety nine till infinity. <laughs> that's 99. what that reminds me of. What's that? That's Jay Z. Uh, uh, no, it's not a. That's um. That is definitely an old school. I can't believe I can't remember. You're it, right. 90s. You're right. Yep. 
I think put that it, in the I comments, think it's man. Q-tip. You know who who's Q-tip? Put that in the comments. Who's Q-tip's um <clears throat> Fife Dog Q-tip yep. Tribe Called Quest? Tribe Called, I think that's a Tribe Called Quest mm. thing. Might be wrong, but any nights Eminem? No, that no. I think it's I think it's Tribe Called Quest. Oh, Eminem CD was called Infinity. Yeah, infin- Yeah, that's man. That's one of my. That's funny because I. I learned about that CD mm-hmm. probably like in 2012. Dang, that's late, late. Yeah, super late. And I was like, oh, snap, dude's been nice. Yeah. It's one of my favorite MCDs. That's interesting because I, really, uh, I never really bumped it. I downloaded it, never really bumped it. I never really bumped it either. I appreciated it. Mm. Uh, every now and then I'd listen to it just to go back and see his thought process and see like the... yeah. The, uh, his evolution in, in music. It's worth, it's worth taking a listen. He's somebody who mastered his craft. As a battle rapper, you have to mem- you have to be a dope freestyler, so you practice freestyling. You got it. A, you got it. You just have to, you have it. But you also practice freestyling. I'm talking completely off the dome. But you also had to prepare, you also memorize a ton of raps. Yeah. And I think about that a lot as we are doing acapellas or live mm-hmm. or even on the podcast. We We got bars in the clip and the more you practice it, the more you're able to regurgitate them. So right. M was off the top, but he also got plenty of raps written that kind of generic. Like this, this could be a diss for you or the next guy, yeah, yeah, but it's yeah, in the yeah. clip ready to yeah. go. So, yeah. and he just he's a, he's a craftsman and he works in a level of excellence to another level. Actually, mm-hmm. you could always admire um, excellence, man. Yeah, definitely, one hundred percent. Last thing I wanted to um, say uh, with my music obsession passion that God has given me is uh in college I shared my down I had a download folder that I would share through Instagram so excuse me a download folder that I would share through instant messenger <laughs> so anytime I was logged on people could go into my shared files and download from my LimeWire whatever I would get my source from what? and dog I had folders and folders and folders people just go to me wait till I was logged on and download anything from like a stand up comedy that was an hour long or they would download just full CDs unreleased new hasn't been released yet so bootleg uh, yeah I had to plug I had to plug I just love music you I love music plug. to this day you I was the, the plug you man. the plug that's no dope. longer now I'm just a socket <laughs> no, I'm joking. I don't know. <laughs> that's hilarious that is good that's funny cause the plugs are the sockets when I, but you know when you, when you see people put the plug emoji and as I said that I was like what did I just say but when you, when you see people use the plug emoji they got the actual two prong three prong thing that's what I'm saying that you stick in yeah but the socket is the source the socket is the source wow. so what you said is facts bro God is good. You the socket. I the socket, bro. That's dope. I'm not the socket though. I'm the plastic. God is the socket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the con- conduit that he flows listen, through. Stop being I'm the humble. Con- I'm the conductor. Stop, stop being humble. You're the socket. He made you a socket. He's the energy. I'm the socket. wires. No, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a socket. No, that's amazing. That's funny. I never thought of it like that. The Me plug. Either. So what's the plug? The pl- it's not a plug though. It's not called the plug. We just. You plug it in, it's you're plugging it. Well, if you say pass the plug, pass me the plug. If you plug something, the physical you're, thing you're, you stick you're filling in the socket. It. Yeah, if you're plugging it, you're filling it. Mm-hmm. So what is this? What's it called? Because plugging is a verb. Late night. What's the noun? Yeah. Late night YNL thoughts with yes. Tim Tim. YNL Media. <laughs> man, pot, this podcast is a part of that. There's gonna yeah. be, it's going to be visual soon. It's going to be a visual video soon podcast, enough, which man. is the new wave beating me up trying to figure out how to get all this it's frequencies and that's the diligence yeah. though we don't just quit we don't be like ah my videos ain't up to par i'm done my raps ain't up to par my the sound quality i'm done we don't quit yeah we don't quit we don't quit it's just a it's just a matter of fact a matter of getting the equipment so stay tuned for them visual podcasts man we love you guys if you're listening this late in the game go ahead and uh comment down below let us know what's your favorite part about this. Peace. Love y'all. God bless. <coughs> Tim Tim, I'm going to cut that cough out, but say something to the people. Say goodbye. Say, say something encouraging.